All right. So Becky, I don't know if you wanna take the reins here. Uh, sure. Um, so let me just pull up the agenda. Yeah, so again, this is a um, meeting of the working group of the um, age friendly, age and dementia friendly Amherst working group. Um, so there are two attendees um, listening. And so um, you'll be invited to, for, to contribute comments during the public comment period um, of the meeting. Um, but so the, the objectives of this meeting are to get a touch base on the status of the surveys, um, distribution, printing, um, and response, responses. Um, and then we're gonna talk about a proposed plan for community engagement um, uh, beyond the survey. So some topic-based forums and discussions um, going forward and whether or not we can have those um, online or in person. Um, and then uh, look at dates for these forums and also um, a regular date for working group meetings. Um, but, I guess, why don't we go around and do quick introductions? Um, do we wanna do that, Maureen, or? Okay. Yeah, sure. Um, just uh, state your name. Um, we don't need intros, because um, we did that last time. And uh, unless unless folks weren't here last time, um, then then you yeah, can maybe, say. Maybe we can just get any new, new folks, because I think our names are all on there. So. Oh, true. Yeah, that, that is a good point. Yeah, are there any new folks that weren't, weren't able to attend the January 20th me meeting? I think I um, wasn't here. Oh, yes. I, I was not. I was not here the last meeting. Unfortunately, I was unable to make it. OK, yeah, Margaret, uh, could you uh, state your name and um, tell us, you know, are you a resident of Amherst or are you um, a caregiver or what's your association to this project? Um, so I'm a panelist. Um, I taught um, the psychology of aging and I'm working with the library to create open educational resources um, or open resources about aging. Um, I'm also a development, human development expert. Um, and I had, my interest is that I had an elderly father who's 56 when I was born. And so if I was able to know what he was going through when I was younger, I think it would have been beneficial to everyone. Um, and the more I've learned about the aging process, the more I've realized it is something that happens to everyone and there are small things that can make big differences. Mm -hmm. So I would like to try and bring some of my expertise as well as my personal experience um, with my own family to mm -hmm. help the uh, citizens of Amherst. And I live in Northampton, which is why I'm a panelist and not a member. Mm -hmm. So. All right, and uh, Christine? Hi, I'm Chris Brestrup. I'm the planning director, and I'm here to listen and learn about this project and support Maureen in her work. Um, so hello, everybody. Hi, Chris. Uh, thanks for tuning in, Chris. Um, all right. So, uh, Becky, I guess we can go to the first meeting agenda, item of the agenda. Sure. So, um, the survey, uh, I, I've been, I was away for two weeks, so <laughs> while I was gone, a lot happened, um, but the, the survey was finalized. Um, the planning office had it translated into Spanish and Portuguese, and also developed a cover letter, um, which I think you all received, um, which has a number of different languages and, and, and just says that people can call the um, Council on Aging if they want a survey in, in those different languages. Um, and I understand that a mailing was completed um, uh, and that was 500, is that right, John? Yeah, we sent out 500 surveys. Um, right. That was about 10 days ago and uh, we've gotten 70 back so far, which is oh. pretty good. I expect within the next uh, week or two, another 10 days, we'll probably be over 100. 
And then we are planning to do a second follow-up ma mailing. And hopefully that'll get us over a couple hundred surveys from the mailing process, which would be terrific if we could get that number. Has um, anyone been entering those hard copies since you've received them or do you need help with that? Um, we may need help with that. Um, like I said, we have 70 back. Uh, I entered a few just to test the process and I found one minor problem, which I reported to Nicole. Okay. Uh, by not a major problem, just one thing that uh, kind of slipped by probably. But other than that, I think the data entry should be fine. Uh, after this meeting, I'm giving Chad 25 surveys to, uh, to enter. So that means we'll have uh, a little bit, maybe 40 left, which I have, have to assign. And I think I've got a couple of people. So we may need help in a few days, but as of right now, we've started on the process of entering them. I also want to note that uh, Maureen set up the process. Um, we all gathered at the town room and town hall. And with her help, uh, Maura Keene, uh, Rosemary Koffler, uh, Lucia Tarowski, and Chad uh, Fuller, who I was already mentioned, stuffed 500 envelopes. And uh, then Maureen put them in the mail. So again, I think we'll get back uh, somewhat over 100. I don't want to be too optimistic, but I think that's a conservative estimate. And we plan to do a second mailing in about 10 days, and hopefully that will be as successful as the first. And so 70 out of 500. So right now we've received 14% back of yeah. Of, yeah. So that that's that's a good um, turnout so far, I think. And yeah. um yeah. Maybe I'd I like don't know. to see twenty to twenty five percent back. <laughs> okay. All right, and then Haley. So Haley, uh, uh, our senior service director, um, is taking the lead with with um, working with um, our COVID ambassadors um, and volunteers with um, potential um, co uh, questions or assistance that would be needed uh, for uh, taking the survey. Um, could you speak about that, Haley? Sure. Um, so we have the COVID ambassadors coming in about four or five days a week, and they are they're helping people when they have questions, but they're also making cold calls to people who participate in our programs to let them know about the survey and ask if they need any help doing it online. Um, that process has been a little slow going. Um, I think we had one volunteer who spent an hour with one individual on the phone, so it's not as high a turnout as we'd like, but they are chugging along and making mm -hmm. progress on that front. Mm -hmm. And then, um, so so the surveys um, are being offered in English, Spanish, and Portuguese, and then we have a statement page that is um, that says, if you would like assistance, Mm -hmm. um, please call this phone number or email address. And that's um, stated in uh, Korean, Chinese, and Khmer. And, um, and so um, I believe the COVID ambassadors, among others, will help with, um, with potentially helping uh, um, with translation um, or perhaps redirecting them to those that can are fluent in those uh, specific languages. And then Haley, you, um, so the surveys, if you complete the survey and you mail it back, it goes to a PO box mm -hmm. um, that John Hornick set up. And then, um, and then if in the event that the, 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 the survey that we mail um, is undeliverable for whatever reason, the person no longer lives there or, um, or what have you, it's going, uh, it'll get um, brought back to the post office and then brought back to um, senior services. So, Haley, how many um, have you received of undeliverables? Only one. Oh, okay. There you go. So. And so we could uh, recycle that, uh, no, not the word recycle. We could reuse that um, yes. um, and, um, for, uh, for someone to use and fill out. Okay, great. Can I ask a question? Sure. sure. Um, John, you referred to that there was a glitch on the online survey. 
I, I did it myself without any problem, but we did have a member who wrote back to say that they got stuck and it kept returning to page one. So I just don't know mm -hmm. if that was a one-off or if- That I don't know, Liz, because there were different links and I just used the one for uh, the mailed survey. And the problem that I encountered was uh, there's an item, I think it was 54, where you, people can reply or well, and the survey that is entering, someone had put in two responses, which they're supposed to be able to do. Yeah. But the, uh, the, com the computer survey monkey program that I was entering into uh, wouldn't only allow me to put in one. So I let Nicole know about that. That was the only problem that I encountered. So I think if you see others the person to uh, report that to is Nicole Orent, right, Becky? Yeah, or you She's can email me and I'll get it to her. Who's managing those. Okay, that's good to know. Thank you. I'll double check what the issue was. Yeah, there was one issue that's, that was forwarded to her and I, I think it ended up not being an issue, but I'm not sure if that was the same one that you're talking about. Um, it I, yeah, I don't know. Uh, and then Becky, I had two questions for you. If you could provide an update, one, uh, what uh, can do you have any reporting of the turnout so far in Survey Monkey, so the online survey version? Yeah, we've got two hundred and twenty-seven responses, which is amazing <laughs> for <laughs> the first couple of weeks. Um, so that's great. I, and I guess. So, so far in terms of engaged online engagement, um, Haley sent out the email with the survey links and um, has it been posted on Facebook? I haven't seen all the, the online engagement yet. But something's working, oh. so. <laughs> oh, good, um, I'll, check. I'll check with Brianna on that. I think I still need access to some of our social media accounts. I only just got set up through Civic Plus last week, um, but we've been using, we've been referring people to engage Amherst almost exclusively. It just seems to be the easiest way to get that information out. And yeah. we did have some people who said they had issues, but they seem to be corrected by just refreshing your browser or using, you know, Chrome instead of Internet Explorer. Mm. Mm. The, the, yeah, library yeah. Did, the library oh. did post it. Online. Oh. oh, great. Um, and I'm trying to go to the town's Facebook page now. So our communications manager um, did a terrific job of um, featuring the survey and the projects on our on the homepage to um, to the town of Amherst website, and um, and then it's been featured on Engage Amherst. And I noticed that it was um, featured in the Amherst Indy and the Daily Hampshire Gazette. Uh, for some reason, I, I didn't think about checking Facebook um, or any other sort of social media. Um, but yeah, so Haley, perhaps you could look into that if I can't find Follow that up right. with her. Yeah, I'm, my guess is she probably did, but I, I don't know officially. And then, um, Becky, did you want to make a, a, a clarifying note about whether these surveys are anonymous or not? Yeah, um, we had a question from one person um, about that. And I think that's something that we had discussed before, but it, we didn't end up putting anything on the cover letter or survey. But um, the survey responses are anonymous. We, we've asked people if they wanna provide contact information for the drawing and, um, or if they want the senior center to reach out um, about services or programs. And I think what, what we can do to ensure the anonymity of survey responses, um, at least on the survey make monkey side is, you know, we'll, we'll provide the list of contacts um, to the senior center and we'll use the list for the drawing. And then we can remove that information from the data before we forward it to John and, and anyone else who's doing the analysis. Um, you know, we do have the hard copies, but um, I, I don't foresee any issues there. I think we'll, we'll just dispose of those once they're entered into SurveyMonkey. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, we, we, we should probably include that in any online um, outreach that we're doing going forward. Um, it, maybe 
we just sent in the print order today. So I don't know if it's too late to add that to the cover letter, but um, I can see and we could add that. that yeah, we could certainly uh, clarify that on the project page um, and all, you know, all our sort of online advertisement for the project and the survey. And uh, we have two um, drop-off locations, including the Bank Center and the Jones Library at the uh, at the circulation desk or across from the circulation desk. And um, maybe we could, well, uh, we're going to have um, like a sort of signage to help uh, uh, locate that the drop-off box. So perhaps the signage could include a little note saying, you know, the surveys will be anonymous. Yeah, we can add that. We've already got a couple um, returned that way. Oh, great. How, how many? <laughs> Only about five, but that was still pretty hey. good. Uh, so I'm writing this all down. Drop-off um, returns. And that's just at the Jones... Not the Jones, um, the Bangs. At the Bangs. And so, and that's five, five returned. Mm -hmm. uh, I see Rosemary has a question. Rosemary? Yeah, my question is how are we reaching people who are rather isolated, who don't get out or can't get out or um, are just not as connected as, as most of us in the community? Um, how are we getting to those people who I think their responses and their needs are probably the greatest and we have to be sure that we get in touch with them. Yeah, so that'll be primarily conducted through telephone outreach um, by having these COVID ambassadors make phone calls to residents of, you know, Ann Whalen, Clark House, um, and anyone that we know of at the senior center who's homebound. Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, we, um, so as Haley said, they're calling individuals. Um, you know, I, I don't know beyond the, the list that Haley has, how we, how we can identify others who might, <laughs> who, who might not be able to get out or um, to do an online survey, but um, I guess we could, in, in any press releases going forward, we can certainly tell people to call the senior center if they want to want help with the survey. Yeah, and the cover letters um, that were mailed out to to the um, our sample uh, our sample of five hundred individuals um, includes you know a statement saying that if you need assistance, please call you know senior service at. Yeah. Um, senior service at amherstma.gov or to call them directly and um, that same statement is listed on the project page and on the home page of the town website where you know we're featuring this project so um i guess it, it is putting sort of the onerous on individuals to go on the website and and and, and find find this project um we, we, you know, with the assistance of Haley and her staff and volunteers, um, they will be taking calls and, and responding to emails if there's any inquiries. I think Brad. there's two pieces of information. I may be incorrect. Uh, John is going to try to uh, make a correction for a true uh, sample of the entire universe. Uh, we have a street directory and I think there's, um, what do you call it? Uh, a survey that was done that shows the aged uh, population of the town. Maybe those two could be combined in the final correction uh, process. Chad, the sample of 500 was indeed a sample. It was uh, something that Maureen drew from the town street list randomly. So um, we'll be able to compare uh, information from those people who completed the survey with uh, information about the population we have in the overall town street list. So that wasn't 500 of people over 55? Yes, all people over the age of 55. Sorry, okay. I didn't say that. Yeah. So this gets at Rosemary, what Rosemary- Chad, can I interrupt you for one second? Could you speak up or uh, maybe speak closer to your microphone? It, you're very, you sound very far away. 
So that, that gets at uh, what Rosemary was mentioning. The isolated, the, the people who are not, um, you know, uh, listening to the to uh, the internet or some of the other more easy methods to pick people up. And Does that get at her question? Point taken, Chad, thank you. And Haley, um, is there, you have a regular newsletter that goes out too, right? Are you advertising the survey in there? Yeah, that was on the front page about the okay. survey. Um, and we'll feature it in the next May, June edition as well. And it also, the survey did go out to all Amherst Neighbors members. And okay. was that a member list too, Liz? Or just yeah, it went out to our, all of our mailing lists. So that included um, people who are not members. So over 500 people. Great, Th great. Thank you for doing that. So that was by email? That was by email, um, okay. yes. And it, uh, one of the things, just listening to this call, we do have um, some people who have contacted us both as non-members and members who they do not have email. So I think I actually wanna run our list to particularly reach out to them um, by phone. Um, and actually we have a fair number of people from Clark House who, who are that group who don't have email but I think would be interested in the survey. Yeah, and so, then I believe Haley had mentioned that are the COVID ambassadors going to reach out to um, housing um, developments such as the Clark House to make calls? We can't get a list of phone numbers of residents in those complexes, but we can definitely call people in our system. And what we can also do is, we're gonna make plans to do this in the near future is distribute those surveys along with our Meals on Wheels and Home Delivered Meals mm -hmm. program. A lot of the people that we're calling right now um, are also participants in that, and that will reach folks who are homebound and not able to leave. And then Haley, as a follow-up question, just even for my education, and perhaps others, when you say our system, what, is it, what does that mean? So we have a database of participants at the Senior Center through a platform called My Senior Center. Um, and it just has people's contact information, um, you know, what programs they attend. And so we keep records um, on service stats. Rosemary has her hand up. Yes, I have a question for Amherst Neighbors. Um, you said it goes out to five, has gone out to 500 people. Are those all Amherst residents? Are Most of them are Amherst residents. Are, we have almost 300 members and those are all Amherst. Well, I have to say some are Pelham, um, but we've communicated that this is just an Amherst okay. effort. Um, so yeah, that's a good question. So and some of them are Pelham and some, in, in terms of our broader database, I'm sure there's some people in there who've attended our programs who don't even live in Amherst or Pelham. So, uh -huh. Uh -huh. so you, you have only member, your membership list has to be Amherst only. Amherst and Pelham. Oh, and Pelham. Amherst okay. neighbors is Amherst and Pelham. Okay. Okay. So someone from Leverick can't become a member. No. Okay. And then, um, sorry, to jump back to the senior service database, Haley, do you, um, what's the, um, what, how many um, seniors are in that database, if, um, you know, roughly, if you don't know the exact oh. number? We've got to have over a couple thousand. It's pretty, and I don't know the last time that we really fine tuned that information, um, but it's extensive. That's great. That's great to hear. Um, so we also, I'm looking at the um, survey engagement plan, and we had a long list of organizations um, who we were going to ask to distribute the survey on the email list or for listservs. Um, I guess. Yeah, Haley, could you speak to that? You were going uh, to. Which, you already which thing? That? So which thing were we talking um, about? I'm looking at the um, survey engagement plan. I can share mm -hmm. it if you want. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, so once I get the booklets, I'll be dropping off at uh, the Amherst Survival Center and at Craig's Place. We already have surveys available at the Bang Center and there's some at the Jones Library. They'll get booklets too once those are finished. Um, 
and then we'll be doing some more outreach calls for doctors' offices and churches, um, just kind of like on a rotating basis. Okay. So ha has anyone emailed these um, email lists? So we have former town meeting members. There's a listserv. Um, churches, business improvement district. Um, and I guess, does anyone have access to all these email lists or? Um... I, I do, Becky. I okay. was waiting for authorization from Maureen to go ahead and do some of this. Okay. Yeah, and actually, um, give me one second. I want to, hold on, Amherst um, Department, Senior Center. And I believe Haley has uh, done targeted emails to some of these groups already. We um, did the working group and then Paul sent out an email to all staff, all mm -hmm. town staff got that. Advising everyone, uh, the staff to um, forward along to their yes. um, particular boards or committees. Mm -hmm. So for instance, I'm a staff liaison to three boards, including the Zoning Board of Appeals, the Design Review Board, and the Disability Access Advisory Committee. And so I have forwarded the, um, the, the information about the surveys to those three boards. So John, yeah, I guess if you have any of these other email lists, just, just let it, just confirm which ones and um, that you are emailing. I, I do. Okay. Um, I maintain these for various reasons. I, I just don't know exactly what Maureen and Haley have done. So I, if I know that, then I can fill in with the others. So okay. it's, it sounds like just working group and the town staff have been covered, but not all these. Uh, so is, does that include the Disability Advisory Committee and Veteran Services? Yeah, yep. So okay. that, that is a town committee. Okay. I see that um, one church or maybe two is left out. I think these are very important uh, because they get it to populations Rosemary and I were pointing to, people that are isolated at the edge of our uh, town line. Um, one is called, uh, um, oh, actually, I don't know the name. It's the um, Voting Center in North Amherst that used to be a Christian church is now, um, um, I think it's a Korean Baptist or Korean Methodist. Are you familiar? With yeah, that? I don't have an email for them. If anybody does send it to me and I'll make sure that gets off with the additional churches that I have listed. Also, Goodwind is left out. You have Hope there, but not Goodwind. Goodwind? That gets at the I-N. Okay. That gets at um, the two black churches in town. Again, I don't have an email for them, Chad. No, Excuse email me. is not the best way. That's why we're missing. Oh, you. okay. We need to have personal contact. Okay. Well, that's Telephone. good to know. We'll we can work on that. We are um, so in addition to this to get it, to sending emails out about the surveys. Um, we are getting some printed. Uh, the print order just went in. So we're getting 500 English, uh, I forget, <laughs> 75 Spanish and 25 Portuguese, I think. I think it was 50 Portuguese. 50 Portuguese, okay. And um, so Maureen has some connections with the Spanish speaking Portuguese. I speaking. do not, but, um, but um, Haley, and John um, have connections to uh, Haley's uh, volunteers and John and uh, has uh, community members that, that they have contacts with uh, uh, residents that are native speakers of Portuguese and Spanish. So maybe uh, John and Haley could speak to that. Yeah, I mean, we have uh, Juana Trujillo is our bilingual outreach coordinator. So certainly um, we can, we'll have her make some phone calls to residents. Um, and then we have a COVID ambassador who's fluent in Portuguese and I can work with her as well and identify um, people that we can reach out to. Great. So uh, these, yeah, so these printed copies will be available if they are not comfortable doing it online. And John? Sid, Sid yep. Ferreira and I have agreed on uh, something like 18 people we're going to reach out to individually 
some of whom are black, some are Hispanic, some Portuguese. And uh, so we'll be distributing those surveys to those people, asking them to try to get at least five, if not more, back to us so that we have a good outreach program for uh, communities of color. Mm -hmm. Thank you for, for assisting with that. And, and, and uh, I still haven't spoken directly to Sid. Thank, continue to thank Sid for his assistance with this. Um, Haley, what is your estimated time for these booklets to be delivered to Amherst? Becky, you oh, just dropped me? them off yesterday, right? And it's through Amherst Copy? Uh, it's actually through Millennium Press. So they'll deliver them to the Senior Center. Um, I imagine it'll be by the end of the week. Okay. Oh, great. So, yeah. okay. so then we can work on the following week getting those out. Yep. Yeah. So John, you could touch base with Haley about that. Probably hold off until Monday to be safe about picking up copies. Okay. Okay. Be ready for pick up. Ready for pickup. Um, today's date is the 28th. So next week would be March. Uh, March the 7th yeah would be maybe the estimated delivery we'll be ready yeah I imagine I'll be by the end of this week so we okay have yeah. yeah great um okay. yeah so before we move on to the next agenda item does anyone have any questions about or uh, additional questions or comments about the survey status And um, I, I believe Chad ha is offering to assist with um, uh, um, um, doing data entry. Yeah, thank you. Data entry from the, the physical hard copy and then um, putting it into the survey monkey. Um, if anyone wants to help volunteer um, with stuff, um, with perhaps data entry, um, or um, if you know anyone that uh, speaks, um, you know, Spanish or Portuguese, um, you know, please chime in now, or you can shoot Haley um, Bolton an email. Um, that would be really uh, helpful. Okay, so I guess we can move on to the next agenda item, Becky. Okay, so next is the um, community engagement plan and timeline, which. Um, which Wayne sent out, um, and I can share that also. Um, so what we're proposing, and this is what has worked um, in other communities, and I, I do want feedback from all of you to, to see what you think will work in Amherst. Um, but what we're proposing is to do um, a series of uh, discussion forums um, in the in the past, we've done them with um, congregate lunches at the senior center um, or just with working group, um, working group members and invited sort of topic, um, topic specific uh, stakeholders. So like for transportation building and outdoor spaces, we'd invite um, someone from the DPW, um, parks department, as well as, you know, open it up to the public and really try to get older adults to come to um, with the purpose of, you know, we, we sort of do a broad overview of the project and then um, ask people to list challenges, you know, assets and challenges in those topic areas. Um, and then if I do it in person, I usually have like a um, dot voting system where we ask people to go up and vote on priorities um, if I do it online, it's kind of harder to do that, but we could do sort of a prioritization process later with, a, with an online survey or something like that. Um, so what we have here is proposed is on Mondays, uh, I guess it's the fourth Monday from 2.30 to 4. Um, and I'm not sure what the, Haley, what's the latest in terms of meetings in person? So the senior center is still holding in-person meetings um, and I've blocked off that timeline on the fourth Monday in our large activity room, which houses about a hundred people. 
um, right. or in-person sessions. Um, so we, you know, we would be able to do that. Um, and if need be, we can still be masked or socially distant, mm -hmm. um, you know, depending mm -hmm. on what happens at the Board of Health level. Yeah. Um, so can you clarify that, Haley? You're mm -hmm. having, uh, so yeah. I, 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 I staff three board meetings. So we vir we're meeting virtually, but are, when are you offering senior activities like uh, exercise, fitness classes, those are in person? Yeah, what, those are what? all in person. The only thing we're limited or prohibited from doing right now is uh, congregate dining and any like indoor singing or music activities. Mm -hmm. But we still have exercise classes. We have a Shakespearean literature group that meets here um, and we're gonna be onboarding more programs in person in the coming months. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so and so we, we would just need to clarify with the town manager mm -hmm. um, and the health department director about have holding in-person forums mm -hmm. um, because the town manager is um, having is um, for all meetings besides the town council until April 1st, all meetings are being held virtually. And then he needs to make a decision whether meetings will be allowed to be held in person um, after that. Um, so um, what are folks, uh, so let's just say, you know, Paul Bachelman is sort of, you know, open to the idea of holding these meetings in person, these listening sessions. Do, uh, do people have opinions of one way or the other? Would you want to meet in person or, or do you have concerns? Is there a possibility to do it hybrid? Do you have that technology? Like if, because I'm thinking, you know, we had a couple of people who were disabled and um, it was easier for them to do Zoom. Yeah, maybe Chris Brestrup could speak to this. Uh, I know that the town council has had hybrid meetings. Um, it, it does require uh, staffing from our IT department. Um, so there would need to be coordination and, you know, we would need to see if, if they're available during these times. So I, I wouldn't want to commit to something at this time, not knowing um, other uh, departments workload and, and, and the sort of technology demands that would be required to um, provide at the bank center or wherever um, the meeting would be held. Alex? Yeah, I would just I would just add to that that MM, there are no other boards that are having hybrid meetings. We have the technology, but we don't have the staff to do it. So, if we were to do something hybrid, it would be an exception that's not available to any of the other boards at this time because of the staff workloads. Thank you, Alex. Uh, Chris. So I just wanted to mention that um, there's going to be a department heads meeting next week and an all staff meeting the week after and um, plans for meetings, you know, public meetings may become clearer after that. But Maureen's right that the town manager has put a um, kind of a hold on most in-person meetings until April 1st. And the only exception to that is the town council, which does get support from IT to hold hybrid meetings. Um, the governor has recently allowed um, remote meetings to continue until July 15th, and that's for public bodies. So that may, may have some impact on what the town manager decides to do. But um, yes, everyone's right in saying that we don't have enough staff to um, hold hybrid meetings for bodies other than town council at this time. Chad had a question. Chad? Sure. Um, I'd ask what is the purpose um, and try to design a better, may, uh, possibly a better way to do it. For instance, out of the center, uh, around in the locales, uh, in non-town owned properties where there aren't the rules that require uh, certain things be done. Um, I, I'm not sure what the purpose is. The hybrid sounds great because it reaches out more, but uh, what, what is the purpose of them? Of the forums? Yeah. Um, 
the purpose is to really hear from older adults um, about their specific challenges. Um, it's just a different way of engagement beyond the survey. Um, you, I, you tend to get a lot more discussions um, in these forums. And I find when you invite other stakeholders like DPW and, um, and you know, town department heads, um, it's an opportunity for them to hear directly from older adults where, you know, they might not otherwise. Um, I know Amherst has a really good, um, good level of engagement, so that that may not be the case in Amherst, but um, it's just a different form of engagement to, to gather information for the report. Yeah, it's like the blank uh, question at the very end. <laughs> Right. When you have a dialogue, to, information is going in both directions. There can be a lot more information gathered if you have a note taker or a recorder or something like that. Yeah. But again, you may want to do it in areas that are not constrained, such as, um, you know, for uh, North Amherst, it might be um, Cushman Market, uh, you know, for... Um, South Amherst, it, it might be the church in at the common or or something like that. That's a good point. Thanks, Chad. Um, yeah. Liz? Yeah. My only other thought is um, I know it's more work, but to potentially do both kinds of meetings for people who really can't get out um, to do online and then in person. That's a good I, point. I was going to say same th I agree with Liz on that. Uh, Liz and Carolyn. Okay, thank you. Those are, yeah, those are uh, something for us to consider um, on yeah, a variety of, uh, variety of, uh, for a variety of reasons. Yeah, it might be a time where people, some people feel safe attending and other people don't, regardless of what the town decides. Sure, sure. Yep, yep. Yeah, and we may, um, I don't know if we could, we may want to either consolidate a couple and just have, you know, three in person, one online or something like that, um, mm -hmm. or just offer one online version for, you know, that covers all the topics, because um, mm -hmm. otherwise mm -hmm. it's going to get pretty cumbersome. <laughs> I find as we do these that the more you have, the less participation you get, because it kind of stretches out. But um and I do appreciate, Chad, your, your suggestion of doing it in other locations. Um, I think I wanna think about that a little because we'll want to, um, we'll wanna advertise these so it would involve, you know, just, just being able to, to find other locations and, and that could be a little bit complicated, but it's possible. Um, we could think about focus groups in, in a couple of different places. Um, you did have uh, Haley and, and Maureen put this, this draft plan together. They did suggest um, having people um, in person at events like Farmer's Market, Juneteenth Celebration, and the concert series on the Common. That's something we could you know, get help with the interns um, or- Yeah, and uh, actually did, uh, sorry to interrupt you, Becky. Haley, did you want to speak to um, perhaps what you would envision for, you know, tabling at a farmer's market or uh, at the Juneteenth celebration or the Friday summer concert series on the common? Yeah, well, we're, we're working on that poster and I would do like little leaflets, um, but it would be really great if we could have, you know, some staff and extra help. That way we have more people who can walk out into the farmer's market and really be engaging with folks. Um, you know, we could make buttons for them to wear. Um, all those things are kind of good conversation starters. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's really just, it's really just comes down to personalities and how we can present the message in a way that'll get people's attention and get them interested in taking part in this project. Yeah, and so perhaps you, um, you know, there could be survey forms and a, like a laptop. Um, so you know that could do that. Be hard copies. Um, it might be easier just to have the paper instead of yep. bringing the laptop with us. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But we can have the survey copies in different languages, all at the table. Um, you know, things like that. And then speak probably about the different. Um, so each month, these listening sessions. Um, have a different focus 
and uh, Becky um, was showing that on the um, uh, on the screen. And so, um, for instance, um, the first monthly uh, listening session would be about transportation, buildings, and outdoor spaces. Mm -hmm. The second one would be on housing. The third one would be on social participation and inclusion, technology, um, and civil engagement. Um, we um, we decided with the assistance of our um, ass assistant director of our new office on dis on diversity, equity, and inclusion, uh, Jennifer Moisten thought it would be a, a nice um, complimentary event to have the um, social participation and inclusion listening session in June as a complimentary um, event to the Juneteenth celebration. Cool. So we'll hold that. And then um, the I guess the fourth one in July would be health and community services and public health. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I'm sure Haley is envisioning, you know, if, if, if you know, if staff and volunteers were at the table at the like farmer's market, you know, they could um, engage seniors about these topics and about the project in general. And then additionally about the services that Haley and her staff provide at senior services. So, if, you know, seniors are, are unaware or just people in general are under, unaware of like the senior spirit or the different um, activities offered, that would be a really great opportunity to engage the public. Yeah, it would be yeah. multi-purpose. And I think the farmer's markets will be good. They're consistent. I'm not aware of any town events that are going on in May. So that might be the only way we can connect with people in the community. Might be good to just have a, um, a poster sheet or something where people could write on, you know, what their talent, what they think the priority should be or what challenges um, they face um, mm -hmm. just as a way for people to, to add information. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I also might suggest the health and community services and public safety one. We might want to also include dementia awareness in that one. Um, not, Which one? not to do a whole outreach, not to do a whole education on, on recognizing signs of dementia, but just sort of highlighting um, its importance, which we'll do throughout each of these, but I think it's good to have one that's um, specifically focused on dementia. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, and let's see here. So everyone should have been um, with uh, every all the working group members uh, were provided this plan um, uh, as well as the agenda, um, and it is also um, listed in the town calendar meeting posting for today's meeting. So um, if you hadn't have a chance to review this, I would say take uh, take a moment, um, you know, some time, you know, this week and take a uh, review it. And if you have any suggestions, um, feel free to email uh, Haley uh, Bolton or myself. So do we want to um, just add one more session that would be online um and then you know if i think if we're going to do location specific events or discussions um that might just be separate from from what we have on a poster for these so we could maybe just add one sort of in the middle somewhere with which would be an online forum um yeah so i i think becky uh we're gonna have to work with staff and 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 okay. and work with the town manager about the status of online right. versus in person versus a hybrid approach but yeah okay. it, um and so you had mentioned that you know there should be a, a listening session on dementia and, and which one would that um, be combined with, or would that be its own? That would be the fourth one. The, the fourth one. So oh. that one, two, three, four. So there's four now. You're you're proposing a fifth one. Um, if we do an online one, or we could do, you know, just plan to do the first one online. Um, Ooh, that might make sense. Could you fold? Could yeah. you fo fold in dementia awareness with the fourth one? 
Yeah. Health and I mean, community services, public yeah. safety, and in a way it all ties into dementia awareness. Yeah, that's that's what I was saying. But also, right. you know, we'll mention dementia throughout. If we do the first one online, um, we could also promote it as, you know, sort of a, a broad overview and encourage people um, who might not be able to go in person to, to attend that one. That might be a good way to go because then we'll we'll have one online to start with as we're <laughs> as we're sort of unsure about things. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't like know. What that. do you think, Haley? No, I think that seems reasonable. We should buy to give ourselves a little more time on the in-person. Okay. And if we have an online one, does does this time do you think is is that good or should we do um, one that's more an evening. Is well, I like keeping it consistent, at least. If we're going to okay. change the time for one, I think we should do for all. Okay. And so for working group members, um, does uh, 2.30 to 4 on, on the fourth Mondays of each month, would that work typically? Yeah. Okay, great. Um, definitely. Okay. Okay. Great. Um, and um, so before I guess we move on to the next agenda item, um, do, does anyone have any um, comments or questions about the community engagement plan and timeline as, as um, shown? If our timeline was expanded, we could do a better job, of course. You know, we can have it in buses, uh, we could have it in uh, tabling at uh, Big Y and Stop and Shop. Uh, you know, there could be all sorts of things that we could do, but I don't know what the timeline is. The goal is to um, have the report completed by the end of December. Um, and so, I mean, I'm I'm fairly flexible. I think I think the main constraint is just my time. So if if there are volunteers who want to do other events, um, or if we, you know, if we get assistance from other organizations, um, I, I'm happy to add events as long as you know, whoever's whoever's doing it can be responsible for taking notes and um, contributing whatever feedback you get. Um, and then we can just wrap that into the report. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Chris, uh, do you raise your hand? Yeah, I was just wondering if you wanted to add St. Bridget's to this list of um, churches that you would reach out to. Oh, good catch. Thank you, Chris. And actually they have a, a Sunday morning mass that uh, targets the Latinx community, mm -hmm. St. Bridget's. St. Oh, Bridges, okay. the Catholic Church, right across in downtown Amherst. Okay, great. So they have a mass in Spanish. They have a Spanish yeah. mass on Sunday mornings. Yes. Great. Yes. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah, it's eleven thirty. Okay. Great. Um. All right, so uh, it sounds like we're ready to move on to the next item. Okay. Um, so we'll develop a poster um, for this series and we had a long list of organizations for electronic copies and hard copies to, to distribute that as well. Um, so I guess the next agenda item is setting a regular meeting time for working group meetings um we're doing fourth sometimes it's good to just meet in between the forums um so let's see we might want to meet again so the first forum would be in april april 28th 
So it seems like the would folks be available, I guess, if we wanted to sort of have that consistent schedule with the, the 4th March work, I guess, I think that's uh, one to, uh, the 28th at 2.30, 2.30 to 4, would that work as the next uh, working group meeting? And then, and then it seems like after that, uh, between April and July, we would continue to have our working group meetings slash listen, listening sessions. Uh, yeah, you say that again, Maureen. I was thinking we might want to, yeah, I guess we can see if we need to, I, I, I don't think we need to have working group meetings separate from the forums. I'm not, I'm just trying to think that through. Um, sometimes we have like a, a check-in meeting after the first forum just to get feedback on how it worked and stuff. Um, so, but why don't we plan to have the next working group meeting on March 28th and then... Um, at 2.30, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I like the idea of um, maybe a check-in after the first li listening session to see how that went, um, but um, yeah. maybe we could schedule that at the next meeting. That's a good idea. Okay. Great. Wow, good timing. Anyone else have any last minute comments? It's 11.30. Okay, um, did you wanna, uh, we didn't have, uh, we have two people from the public. Did you wanna quick see if anyone has comments who are attending? Yeah, so if anyone from the public wishes to um, speak, uh, you would um, press the raise your hand or if you're calling in, press star nine. Okay, so it looks like Susan Krim, um, let's see here, uh, allowed to speak. All right, you should be, let's see here asked him. Susan. Uh, I think I clicked on mute. Um, hi, um, I am interested in the dementia focus of things and uh, we'll work with Haley on being some a backup on a couple of these projects. Um, this is my first town committee meeting, but it's a topic I am very interested in and have um, worked at for on and off for 10 years since I took care of my mother with dementia. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for coming. Perspective. Thank you for coming. Okay. I guess that's it. Um, well, thanks everyone. Yeah. And yeah, so I guess we will see you in March. Um, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. All right. And so I will, what will I do? I will send out meeting notes from today and I'll send the recording from today. And um, we made some uh, sweat, uh, some edits um, based on today's meeting. Uh, we'll um, update the, the, um, the overall community engagement plan and uh, we'll send out the latest version of that. Um, so check your invoice in the coming days or in your inbox. inbox. Thank you, sorry. Okay. <laughs> We'll let you know when the hard copies are ready. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Have a great day. Thank you for Thanks. your help, Maureen. Bye.